Groudon, Florges, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Dialga, and Kartana while Serapis has you saw from round one, it's he has Eveltal, Toxicroak, Kyogre, Stack Attacka, Incineroar, and Tapu Lele. <clears throat> and oh man, Brazil money. Man, at this point he's won two internets from Brazil. Like he he is he's Brazil gold, not Brazil money. So I think Ashen does want to bring his trick room mode here with the um with the Dialga potentially. Uh you could probably use that beside Groudon. You could use that besides beside Tapu Fini, assuming that the Tapu Fini has Heal Pulse. <clears throat> Kartana would be really nice here against the Tapu Lele, against the um, the Kartana. No, the Kartana would be good against the Tapu Lele, the Kyogre, and uh, against the Stack Attacka. And it's able to probably two-shot the Toxicroak with Smart Strike. So, <clears throat> Well, Toxicroak isn't able to do much back to it if it has low kick instead of uh, Drain Punch or something, which they normally do use low kick. And we're about to hop in a game here. Uh, players shaking hands. They are bros. Through and through. And the leads are coming out here. Eveltal and Toxicroak coming out from Jeremy. <coughs> and it's gonna be Double Restricted coming out from Ashton. So, oh man, this looks like fun. Okay. So, Dark Aura went off first, then Drought, and then Pressure. So, that Eveltal is probably gonna be moving first. I don't know if we're going to run into a similar situation like last game, like last set, where the Groudon outsped the Toxicroak outside of Trick Room, but that could also very well happen. And Groudon's just going to swap out here for Incineroar. That's a that's a pretty nice play. <clears throat> threatens Fake Out Pressure. Uh, it also potentially threatens a Flare Blitz onto the Toxicroak. With and with dry skin, that's doing more. With the sun up, that's doing even more. Did that toxic crow go for a low kick turn one? It did. How much is this going to do? Oh, to incineroar. Okay, and the trick room is going to come up. I think right here you want to swap the. I think you probably swap the toxic croak into Kyogre, just because you need that. Uh, you're gonna need the low kick pressure and fake out for later. So Incineroar, instead of uh, faking out here, it could potentially just U-turn the Toxicroak slot and then Dialga can do what Dialga does best and just attack. So Toxicroak gonna come back out. Oh, in for Incineroar. That's a, that is a safe play, I, I like that. And Incineroar under Sun, as as we saw last game, don't don't sleep on that. Um, Incineroar is just going to knock off the other Incineroar, probably Berry, correct? Yeah, Fakey Berry, and just an Earth Power coming out. Oh man, how much damage does that do? That does about 50%, so another one of those is just going to take it out outright. So... Dialga could just protect here and Ashen's in center, or if it has U-turn, it can go for that into the Eveltal slot, maybe just to get just a little more chip damage down. <clears throat> because I don't see, other than the Tapu Fini and the Florges, I don't think uh, there's any like super effective damage that's being, super effective same type attack bonus damage that's being immediately threatened. So yeah, U-turn's coming out. And probably back into Groudon, I would assume. Or into something else he hasn't revealed in the back, potentially. Into Kartana. Interesting choice. Very interesting choice. Sinner is just going to U-turn here. Um, maybe swap back out into Toxicroak. 
just to apply more fake out pressure yet again. Is Ashen running a slow Kartana just for Trick Room? Granted, there are some like Assault Vest Kartana that I've seen that don't run maximum speed. They just run the amount of speed that they need to, but Ashen's, uh, Ashen's Kartana might even be slower than that. So we'll have to find out. Is that Sunny D? Dude, I, does anyone else remember the the old orange juice, like Sunny D? Or is that just me? Am I old yet? Probably. Okay, so Kyogre is coming back in. <clears throat> and just an Earth Power into the Kyogre slot. That's, that does about 15% or so. And just a knockoff. And that's going to be Dialga's uh, form of self-healing gone for now. So, in the form of that berry. <clears throat> and Kartana? We don't- we still haven't seen it move yet, so we don't know how fast it is compared to Jeremy's Pokemon. <clears throat> but I don't know how this Dialga is going to threaten much more offensive pressure right now, if it doesn't use something like Draco Meteor into one of these two slots. I'd imagine Ashen's just been using Earth Power just to- um, I'd imagine Ashen's just been using Earth Power to get simple chip damage and then fire off the big stuff later. So, oh, Dialga has Thunder. <clears throat> That's going to absolutely... Oh man, does this kill? Not yet, not yet. And that Eveltal doesn't have uh, a berry, as we've seen. And it under... And so this Kartana is faster than the Eveltal outside of Trick Room but that's going to work against Ashen for the moment. You could pretty easily get Groudon back in now, I think. Oh man. Hi Jake, I miss you. Come to events, buddy. Ashen taking a little bit of time here just to figure out his game plan, probably. And here comes, here come that boy. Oh man, the shiny Groudon looks so bad. Oh man. Oh man. So, Toxicroak can fake out something, but then Jeremy has to reposition with that other slot. <coughs> because otherwise, uh, one of one of Ashen's restric restricted Pokemon on the field can potentially take that out this turn. <coughs> How many more turns of Trick Room are left? There's probably like one or two, perhaps? Hi, Ingrid. Alright, so Groudon's gonna be swapping back out here. Back into Incineroar. <clears throat> this is probably the last turn of Trick Room then. I didn't quite catch it. <clears throat> so... Okay, Toxicroak's just going to fake out the Dialga slot. Fair enough. And Eveltal, just going for a foul play. That does a decent chunk of damage. Okay, so now Incineroar can just use Fake Out into Toxicroak, and Dialga can set it right back up again. <clears throat> so, excellent positioning by Ashton, I think, here. Ashen is going to be operating Trick Room at a lower health, lower amount of health this time, and one Pokemon down. So Ashen really does need to put his foot on the gas for these next few turns under Trick Room in order to uh, be able to get rid of Jeremy's Pokemon. 
Toxicroak swapping back out here. Into Incineroar. Just shuffling fake outs is a good way to stall out the trick room, then, in Jeremy's opinion, probably. So, Incineroar just going for a fake out into the opposing Incineroar, simple enough. Foul play is going back into the D Dialga. That didn't do enough to kill. to, uh. Uh, that didn't do enough to KO, so it's doing close to around 50 damage, per se. Ingrid, I know what the Florix does. I talked with Ashen about it earlier. It's not, it's not pretty. <laughs> it really isn't. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You're reading it too. I know. It's not pretty. <laughs> Alright, so... I mean, I don't think Ashen's going to bring Florix. If he does, that that would be funny. In games 2 and potentially 3. <clears throat> um, Dialga's gonna swap back out here. I think that's a fair play. Groudon has a lot more health at this point, and he wants to preserve the Dialga for later. So I like this play. <clears throat> Incineroar is just going to go for a fake out into, into Ashen's Incineroar. Sucker Punch coming out. Well, that's not enough for the KO. That's funny. <coughs> okay, so... Incineroar can just go for the Hail Mary Flare Blitz onto Eveltal in order to maybe sack itself and then get Dialga back in safer. Because if it uses U-Turn now, then it puts Dialga at risk of getting KO'd. So, he's going to go for it, okay. Alright, Dialga's gonna come back in with not much health at all. Uh, applying the pressure, although I don't think that's going to come back into play here, really. <clears throat> Sends in Toxicroak. And Eveltal su That was a good play. Precipice Blades. Does that take out the Toxicroak? That should. That did. Alright, so... <clears throat> What's the ability? Carnivine has Levitate. Carnivine has le Levitate. It's a strange ability. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Ingrid. <laughs> um, you could probably protect the Groudon now and just swap back into Incineroar. Just so Dialga doesn't have to eat a Fake Out plus Attack. Or you could just go for a double protect now, so the Dialga doesn't have to leave the field. It's just, Jeremy's operating with a low health Incineroar, a low health Eveltal. Ashen's operating with a low health Dialga and a low health uh, Incineroar as well. So, everything's pretty chipped right now. But since Ashen's faster under Trick Room, he has to put his foot on the gas right now, I think. <clears throat> okay, so... Jeremy's Incineroar is just going to fake out. Fair enough. Sucker Punch. Fails. I think Ashen's just trying to make sure his Pokemon are able to survive in order to take out the Eveltal, because Sucker Punch is just the end all against Incineroar and against Dialga at this point. So if Jeremy protects here, Ashen can maybe read that down and shuffle again. There's one turn left of Trick Room, so. All Jeremy has to do right now is protect, and I think he can wrap this up. Because <clears throat> that Dialga is probably not going to get another chance to set up Trick Room. 
It'll be a miracle if Ashen's able to navigate himself into that kind of position. Incineroar is going to swap back out into Dialga. Ashen's not looking too happy about his positioning. Okay. Ivelto just protects. Fair play. Incineroar is just going for a knockoff. And Dialga goes down. So, there goes his Trick Room potential for later. Um... Precipice Blades coming in, and Incin and Voids. Then again, it's a it's a Kyogre in the back for Jeremy, and as we saw in round one, it has the uh, it has a Choice Scarf. So I think Ashen's only out there in the last turn of Trick Room was to make sure that Incin went down for Jeremy, fake out the Kyogre. Uh, and then hopefully Precipice Blades crits maybe? That was Ashen's out there, but obviously Precipice Blades missed. And funny enough, we've had two Groudon on stream, and that was the first Precipice Blades miss of the night. Of the night? Of the day. Oh, uh, and another avoid. That stinks. Well, hey, Ashen's getting the bad luck out of his way now. Ashen's getting the bad luck out of his way now. So, he's probably planning a game... He's probably getting a game plan together for game two. Yeah, and that's going to be the forfeit from Ashton. And game one going to Jeremy Rodriguez. So... I would love to see Ashen make use of the Florics. I would pay money to see that. <laughs> also, happy December to everyone. It's the first day of December. So, may the Christmas caroling be begin. What not. Get your holiday shopping done. It's the best time of the year, folks. Yes, ingredients. THE Ohio State University. You gotta make it a point. <laughs> Ashen has to navigate a little better around Jeremy's fake out. I think. Because Jeremy was able to get his fake out. He was able to keep on cycling fake out. And then uh, Ashen wasn't able to get enough done under Trick Room twice. Sorry, I'm just reading the stream chat. I've been a little quiet. <clears throat> Alright, so we're hopping into game two now. And yeah, also as of round three or four, we have five players currently going... There it is! <laughs> there it is! And Tapu Lele coming out, so even Jeremy's adjusting. Florgs is a fairy type that has pretty good special attack and access to Moonblast. And Cartana is able to threaten that Lele down super hard. So, <clears throat> I, can, I see Ashen uh, having the better lead matchup, I think, here. But now, does, do you expect, I, I, I'm expecting one of these, po one of Jeremy's Pokemon to swap out for Incineroar. Perhaps, if Ashen's able to readjust, then this would be perfect. <clears throat> and no, re no readjustments, just a Smart Strike into the Lele. And there's the Focus Sash reveal that we saw in round one. 
knockoff. Going to get rid of the Adrenaline Orb. Okay. And yeah, it's also very specially defensive, so I can- so Florix was pretty easily able to tank both hits. Now, now I think Jeremy's got to be very scared about his Eveltal on low health because the Kartana can potentially use Smart Strike onto it and take it out right here and now. Does Ashen swap out the Florix for more cheese later? We'll have to find out. <coughs> Oh my gosh, I know what this Florix does, and it is so funny. Alright, Evelto's gonna swap out. And yeah, um, Kyogre's swapping in instead of Incineroar. That's, that's interesting, I suppose. But Kartana is able to out... Okay, so, alright, just covering the Incineroar switch in takes out the Lele. I like that. Does Ashen use what I think he's going to use, though? Okay, it's just going to be another Moonblast. That's very safe. And there's the special attack drop. That's... <clears throat> that's an issue for Jeremy. Yeah, Ashen had the Kartana um, earlier uh, in Game 1, but he had it under Trick Room, so it wasn't out able to outspeed the Eveltal, and it got Foul Played, and it just got taken out straight away. So, one of these Pokemon on Jeremy's side is going to protect, or potentially both, but Ashen needs to figure out which one, and then <clears throat> act upon it into the other slot. So, Florix is just going to come back for now, and a very nice, very nice. <clears throat> so, this is going to basically nullify... This is a basically an attempt to nullify what the Kyogre is able to do to the um, able to do to the Kartana, so he can just focus. So potentially, Ashen is just going to focus down the Eveltal. That's a critical hit. That's unfortunate. And yeah, that was a good protect by Jeremy. And. Does Jeremy have Incineroar in the back in order to eat one of these Smart Strikes? Or if Kyogre swaps out for Incineroar, can Eveltal take a Smart Strike after an Intimidate? Because one, uh, one more attack and that Kartana is basically gone. So, but they're still under Psychic Terrain, so... it. Eveltal isn't able to sit, threaten the same pressure as it did last game with Sucker Punch against the Kartana, so it can't get rid of that straight away. Oh. So. There. Okay. Alright. So. That's going to be the Eveltal down. That's going to be another attack boost. For, that's going to be an attack boost for Kartana. Groudon, did it go for a Precipice Blades? It just went for a Precipice. And the Avoid. Ashen's throwing his hands up in the air. He's mad. <clears throat> He's smiling, though, it's, so I hope it's fine. And the Ice Beam wasn't able to do much to Groudon, so gra granted he doesn't get frozen, um, Groudon should be able to take out the Toxic Croak straight away. Okay, so Kartana's just going to go down now. Precipice Blades, and it connects. So... So, Groudon removed its blindfold for this turn. And... Now, Ashen's up 3-1. to one. one more attack, and that Kyogre basically goes down. So... Dialga coming out here. Honestly, the special attack drop from the Moonblast from earlier might have 
paved the way for Ashen's Pokemon to take overall less damage from Ice Beam. So, there is that. Just one more Ice Beam coming out here for the road. Is there a freeze? There's no freeze. And Precipice Blades hits. And game two going to Ashen. So we are moving on to game three. Ashen not using, not really needing Trick Room this time around. So I think uh, he's found a stride, but I don't think Jeremy, I don't think Jeremy should have brought the Tapu Lele. I do not feel like Tapu Lele was the call there. I feel like Incineroar was the call, and Lele just wasn't able to do enough. Uh, that team name, not Nails. <coughs> Give me one moment, guys. <coughs> Alright, just hopping back into game three now. We're in team preview. I think this time around, Jeremy has to not bring the uh, Tapu Lele because it ended up hurting him in, at the very end, I think. Because... Oh, there are some stats. Um, <laughs> he just had to check it one more time. Um, I don't think Tapu Lele was the call for Jeremy because it stopped Sucker Punch from working. It stopped Toxicroak's Fake Out from working. The only thing, the only thing it was able to do the only thing Psychic Terrain does here is prevent uh, Ashen's Incineroar from being able to fake out the Kyogre, so Kyogre can get Water Spouts off more easily. But I don't think that's a good enough reason to justify bringing it if you if he can if he can position correctly. Ashen, I think he's found a stride with that Florgs. Um, after the Adrenaline Orb reveal, though, Jeremy's got to be careful about bringing Incineroar. So, defi I defi I'm definitely feeling Eveltal, Kyogre, and Toxicroak from Jeremy's side. Either Incineroar or Tapu Lele from Jeremy's as the fourth Mon. And I think it's gotta be Incineroar in that slot. Alright, so it's going to be double restricted from Jeremy, which we saw him doing a bunch in round one. And Kartana, uh, Florgs. I would say double grass, but Florgs surprisingly just isn't a grass type. Go figure. It's pure fairy. <coughs> this, could be tr this could be trouble for Ashen, because potential Sucker Punch plus Fake Out. Uh, Sucker Punch plus Water Spout can take out the Kartana, so he's got to move that out of the way. Um, you could bring in Groudon here. You could bring in Groudon here just to mitigate the Water Spout damage, but if that Kyogre clicks Ice Beam instead into Kartana, then it becomes an issue again. <coughs> so Groudon is going to come back in, is going to come in here. Oh, I hate green Groudon. <laughs> Give us Primal back. How many retweets to get Primal Kyogre back? Primal Groudon back. Okay, so that's a fr that is a free Leaf Blade into Kyogre. Did this ki did this Eveltal go for the foul play though? If it went for foul play, then this is trouble. Oh, just went for knockoff. That's... Yikes. That is Groudon down. That is a big pivotal part. That is a pivotal part of Ashen's game plan right there, gone. <clears throat> oh, man. Alright, Incineroar coming in from Jeremy's side. And Florix coming in... Oh my gosh, Adrenaline or proc. <laughs> so, there's the Intimidate. There's the Adrenaline Orb. I'm popping up way too hard. 
Oh, and Cartana uh, blocks the. Cartana is able to block the Intimidate. Very nice. So in this next turn, would you just double protect with these two if you have it? <coughs> or do you just attack? Because Evelto's threatening foul play onto the Kartana, and that would take it out right now, and Ashen needs these last three Pokemon to survive in order to take out the Evelto. Because Ashen's uh, game plan right now should be to get rid of the Evelto, and after that, it becomes kind of a snowball for him. Jeremy needs to get rid of the Kartana, and potentially the potentially the Dialga in the back. Sacred Sword coming out. Does that take out the Incineroar in one hit? That takes out the Incineroar in one hit. That's very nice. Jeremy is down to two Pokemon. Is this a foul play coming out from uh, Jeremy's Evelto, though? Nope, just another knockoff. And there's the Assault Vest. Surviving on three health, though. So Jeremy knows that Kartana has to um, attack this turn. Just because it has only offensive moves. So he can... He could Sucker Punch, but then again, Kartana can also swap out and be used for later. So, Toxic... This is tough. Because if that uh, Kartana swaps out, it's probably going to be into Dialga. And then Toxicroak and Eveltal can double it with Low Kick and Knock Off, respectively. And that would be the end of it. That would be the end of the... That would be the end of Yalga. So, I think it comes down to a 50-50. Florix is going to swap out instead. Okay, Dialga coming in. Maybe his game plan is to get rid of the Toxicroak now, and then uh, worry about the Evelta later. And Sucker Punch coming out here. That's going to get rid of the Kartana. And Poison Jab, not doing anything. Steel type. Toxic Croak's chip damage, though, could start adding up a little much for, uh... Could start adding up quite a lot. Because... <coughs> Earth Power doesn't take out Toxic Croak in one hit. I think it... The last I remember, that Earth Power was, like, maybe a three-shot onto Toxic Croak. Making me believe that Toxicroak's holding the Assault Vest. But with this added chip damage from the sun, it could start becoming uh, it could start becoming an issue. So what is this floor gonna do? That is the big X factor here. I never thought I'd hear myself saying that. Alright, knockoff coming out here. Knocking off the Aya Papa berry. Floor's just gonna go for a moon blast. <clears throat> into Toxicroak, okay. Doesn't Earth Power come out before... No. Yeah, that's... that's. <clears throat> oh, man. With this added Dry Skin damage, though, maybe Florix can pull this back with spamming Moonblast, but I don't know how many more s turns of Sun that... Uh, I don't know how many more turns of Sun he has left. <clears throat> Ashen, please reveal what I think you should use. There it is, there's the... Yeah, that that was... That was, yeah. There, that exists on Florix. And Poison Jab's able to knock it out. Jeremy uh, going 2-1 in this set. <clears throat> and taking Ash... And taking down Ashton Cox here. Ashen moves down to 2-1. But Jeremy's moving up to 3-0, so he's in good potential for some CP here. And <clears throat> we'll be back with round four shortly. Thank you, guys.